introduction to the book of Galatians. If you've been a Torah observer for more than a day, you might have heard this question. Have you read Galatians? So let's get into Galatians, starting with an introduction. Here's the context of this letter. Galatians is written by the Apostle Paul roughly around 50 AD to the church of Galatia, which was located in Minor Asia. Today, it's known as modern Turkey. The audience was mostly non-Jews, uncircumcised Gentiles, who accepted Yeshua as Messiah and used the Old Testament and the instructions of Paul to live out their faith. But a small sect of Jewish believers could not accept the idea that non-Jews, uncircumcised Gentiles, can be part of Israel. So, they erroneously convinced these Gentile believers to become Jewish proselytes and to get circumcised and become a Jew in order to now say they are saved. So, in the Church of Galatia, you have two Gospels running around. The first one is that you are saved by faith in Messiah Yeshua. And the second one is the false Gospel, that you are saved through being a Jewish proselyte to be converted to Judaism and to get circumcised. Acts 15 verse 1, Peter brings this issue up. It says, And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Paul wrote to the Galatians, rebuking this false gospel, salvation by circumcision, which he called a different gospel. Galatians 1 verse 6, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Messiah and are turning to a different gospel. Paul went on to write about salvation by faith alone, which was given to us through Abraham, and that circumcision or converting to Judaism is not what gets you saved. Galatians 2 verse 16 Yet we know that a person is not justified, that is saved, by works of the law, but through faith in Yeshua Messiah. Paul wrote that you don't need circumcision in order to say that you're saved or that you are part of Israel. You received justification by faith. And once you are justified by faith in Yeshua as Messiah, you eventually will walk out the Torah, which is sanctification, which includes the outward sign of circumcision. Abraham was righteous by faith, before he was ever circumcised. And so also, this applies to your own personal faith. You are already saved before circumcision. Once you are in, you will eventually walk out Torah as a sign of your salvation and as a sign of being part of Israel, including getting circumcised. But never claim that this work within Torah, that is circumcision, is what saved you. Here is a rough outline of the book of Galatians, chapter by chapter. There are six chapters total. Chapter 1 is Paul's salutation, his greeting. Chapter 2, Paul gives us the outline of the true gospel. Chapter 3 is an exhortation to the Galatians. You are sons of Abraham. Chapter 4 is exhortation concluded. You are sons by faith. Your status is by saying that you're in Messiah. Chapter 5 is rebuking the idea of salvation by circumcision, that is, the false gospel, and that you have freedom in Yeshua. He differentiates sanctification from justification. And finally, chapter 6 is final exhortation and his conclusion. We must know historical context in order to best understand Galatians, written by the Apostle Paul. And many of you already know, in Christianity, Galatians has been interpreted from a dispensational paradigm, presupposing that Paul was trying to do away with the Torah. But as a Torah observer in Messiah Yeshua, we approach Galatians from the angle of a first century Jewish paradigm. That is, how you read Galatians, from a proper perspective. That is, to use proper hermeneutics. The letter of Galatians is not saying that the law was abolished or that keeping the Torah is a bad thing. This is not biblical. Understanding this is fundamental to reading Galatians and understanding Paul. Paul promotes keeping the Torah, 
and is easily misread and misunderstood. So it's important when we don't read the idea that the law was done away with into his text. I hope this introduction brings much clarity to this letter and it's a great start to this series on Galatians that we're about to begin. Please share your favorite Galatians commentary or perhaps the hardest Galatians Bible verse that you have a hard time comprehending. Thank you and Shalom.